Ladybird. Is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quote? Well, I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best performances in teen movies. If you don't see my blackness, you don't see me. For this list, we'll be looking at the best acting we've seen in this genre of films. What's your favorite teen movie performance? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Reese Witherspoon, Election. Before she was Elle Woods, Reese Witherspoon was Tracy Flick, the overachieving high schooler running for student body president in Alexander Payne's brilliant satire. This driven student is ruthless in her quest to win. Who put you up to this? Oh, hi, Tracy. Who put you up to this? What do you mean? You just woke up this morning and suddenly decided to run for president? But Tracy's also shrewd enough to not face punishment for her wrongdoings. It should come as no surprise that more than one politician has been compared to her. Although the writing is phenomenal on its own, the movie definitely needed Witherspoon in the role. You know, instead of wasting your time interrogating me, we should be out there trying to figure out who did this. Okay, Tracy. Who do you think did it? Whom should we interrogate? Well, I don't know. You know, it could have been anybody. There's a lot of subversive elements here at Carver. The future Oscar winner gives every one of Tracy's facial expressions and smiles a maximum dose of intensity. If you knew a Tracy flick in high school, Witherspoon's performance will bring you right back there. Some people say I'm an overachiever, but I think they're just jealous. My mom always tells me I'm different, you know, special. And if you look at all the things I've accomplished so far, I think you'd have to agree. Number nine, River Phoenix. Stand by me. Do you think I'm weird? Definitely. No, man, seriously. Am I weird? Yeah, but so what? Everybody's weird. While there are many great performances in this coming-of-age Stephen King adaptation, the standout star is River Phoenix. Hey. Hey, you guys. I bet you anything that if we find him, we'll get our pictures in the paper. Yeah, yeah, we can even be on TV. Sure, we'll be heroes. Yeah. He plays Chris Chambers, one of four friends who go on a life-changing hike. Coming from an unstable home, he not only has to deal with his family, but also the pain of being misunderstood. I just wish that I could go someplace where nobody knows me. Chris does his best to hide his unhappiness, but eventually he has to let his emotions out. Phoenix's ability to show vulnerability, even under a mask of toughness, is remarkable. I'm never gonna get out of this town now, my Gory. You can do anything you want, man. Yeah. Sure. Tragically, River Phoenix passed away at a young age after this film. His performance here demonstrated how natural of a talent he was. Number 8, Elsie Fisher, 8th grade. Few movies have captured the trauma of social anxiety as well as Bo Burnham's 8th grade. And Elsie Fisher's revelatory lead performance earned every accolade it received. Uh, okay, so the topic of today's video is being yourself. And it's like, you know, well, aren't I always being myself? Uh, and like, yeah, for sure. Um, but, uh... She plays Kayla Day, a middle schooler trying to overcome her shyness and figure out who she is. Fisher is both heartwarming and heartbreaking throughout the film. I'm, I'm really, like, nervous all the time. And, I, like, I could be doing nothing and I'm just nervous it's like um we feel for her every step of the way as she reminds us of our own middle school memories as awkward as some of them are though kayla encounters both internal and external challenges she gradually learns to love and stand up for herself fisher created a truly authentic and relatable character with this performance and you know what yeah, you're always mean to me and I'm always nice to you and being mean isn't nice and when someone does something nice to you You're supposed to be nice back and you're always mean to me and I know I'm like a good person because I'm always nice to you and Number seven Amanda Stenberg the hate you give How do you overcome the difficulties of being a teenager in a world that marginalizes you at every turn? 
That's the question at the heart of The Hate You Give, an adaptation of Angie Thomas's acclaimed YA novel. You're different, Star. I'm different? What, I'm the non-threatening black girl? Yeah, you are. Amanda Stenberg plays a 16-year-old named Star who must deal with the complications of living in a black neighborhood while attending a mainly white private school. After witnessing a friend's death, Star is left both mourning his loss and stressing over whether or not to take a stand. Stop right there! Stop! No. No. Stenberg earned numerous awards and raves for making Star into a multi-dimensional character who knows the right thing to do is never the easiest. We can't give any hate to this performance. My name is Star! And I'm the one who saw what happened to Khalil! Number 6, Elliot Page, Juno Teen pregnancy is a difficult subject on numerous levels, especially as the subject of a movie. But Juno is as sincere and lovable as its protagonist. I'm pregnant. Oh, God. Yeah, but I'm going to give it up for adoption, and I already found the perfect couple. They're going to pay for the medical expenses and everything, and in 30-odd weeks, we can just pretend that this never happened. Juno McGuff is a 16-year-old with a quick tongue, but also a massive heart, who has to grow up much sooner than anticipated. Paige is a natural at delivering all the slang-heavy dialogue with humor and honesty. It's probably just a food baby. Did you have a big lunch? No, this is not a food baby, all right? I've taken like three pregnancy tests and I am for shiz up the spot. Thanks to the dedication of this performance, the movie is able to become so much more than a source for quotes. Also, raise your hand if you got a hamburger phone to be like Juno. Yeah, so did we. Can you just hold on for a second? I'm, I'm on my hamburger phone. Yeah, okay, yeah, now I can. Yeah, it's, it's just like really awkward to talk on. Um. Number five, Alicia Silverstone, Clueless. Leave Alicia Silverstone off this list. Ugh, oh, as if. As Cher Horowitz, the Beverly Hills high schooler at the center of classic teen comedy Clueless, Silverstone faces an incredible challenge. She has to be both shallow and likable. Cher, get in here. What's up, Daddy? What the hell is that? A dress. Says who? Calvin Klein. Fortunately, Silverstone nails this tricky balance perfectly. Although Cher might come off like she's more concerned with matters of the mall than of the museum, that doesn't keep her from being a fundamentally good person. See, my mission is clear. Would you look at that girl? She is so adorably clueless. We've got to adopt her. Cher, she is toe up. Our stock would plummet. Dee, don't you want to use your popularity for a good cause? No. Come here. Yeah, come here. She has hidden depths of empathy for others, and when she makes mistakes, she acknowledges her missteps and grows as a person. Look, I have been in agony the past week, and I can't even believe that I went off the way I did. No, I have been going down a shame spiral. I cannot even believe I was so in support of your feelings for Josh. No. Cher's far from perfect, but Silverstone's performance can be described with one word, flawless. Number 4, James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause When you think of a teenage boy in the 50s, you probably picture how James Dean looked in this movie. As troubled youth Jim Stark, he gave both an incredible performance and set a new standard for portrayals of teenagers in movies. Hi. I've seen you before. Well, stop the world. You don't have to be unfriendly. Well, now that's true. But life is crushing in on me. Life can be beautiful. Stressed by his parents' marriage difficulties, as well as conflicts with his peers and himself, Jim is pushed to the limit. But he also learns to be stronger through these challenges. Dean's brooding intensity made him an icon based on image alone. Hey, you shouldn't monkey with him. He's a wheel. 
High School can feel like a horror movie, especially when you're as vulnerable as Carrie White. The shy protagonist of this harrowing Stephen King adaptation is constantly harassed by both her peers and her brutal mother. Mama, I was so scared. I thought I was done. And the girls, they all laughed at me and threw things at me. And Eve was weak. Seth. No, Mama. Eve was weak. No. Eve was weak. No. Eve was weak. Say it. No, Mama. Say it. He was weak! Eventually, Carrie finds strength through developing her telekinetic skills, and the consequences of this discovery are life-changing for everybody involved. Things are gonna change around here. Which... That's Satan's power. It has nothing to do with Satan, Mama. It's me. Me. If I concentrate hard enough, I can move things. Sissy Spacek shows the hurt Carrie is forced to endure, as well as her fury when she's finally pushed too far. Carrie is still as scary now as it was more than 40 years ago. After all this time, Spacek's performance is still in a league of its own. <laughs> Number 2, Saoirse Ronan, Lady Bird Although Saoirse Ronan hails from Ireland, she plays a disillusioned California teen so well that we were convinced she spends her whole life there. You know, Davis has a terrific theater, if you're still interested in theater, are you? I'm probably no good at acting. This coming-of-age story about a Sacramento high schooler desperate to get out of her hometown is one of the best teen films in recent memory. I want to go where culture is, but like how New in the York, world did I raise such or a at least snob. Connecticut or New Hampshire, well, where writers live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. Mom! And Ronan's performance is a big reason why. Lady Bird has many difficulties in her relationships with her mother, her friends, and with herself. Well, I just couldn't tell. Why didn't you just say pick up your feet? I didn't know if you were tired. You were being passive aggressive. No, I you wasn't. You are so infuriated. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling. Oh, it's Honey, perfect. I love it. But despite her flaws and shortcomings, Ronan makes sure the character is sympathetic. We fully believe that Lady Bird wants to be a better person, even if she doesn't always know how. I know I can lie and not be a good person, but please, Mom, please. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I appreciate everything you've done for me. I'm ungrateful and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I wanted more. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Matthew Broderick, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. A righteous performance as a righteous dude. Incredible. One of the worst performances of my career and they never doubted it for a second. Nick Robinson, Love, Simon. Robinson gave us a great performance and one of the first mainstream gay teen protagonists. I don't care if you didn't think that my coming out was going to be a big thing, Martin. Look, you don't get to decide that. I'm supposed to be the one that decides when and where and how and who knows and how I get to say it that's supposed to be my thing. And you took that away from me. Haley Steinfeld, The Edge of Seventeen. Steinfeld shines as a teenager going through a personal crisis. I. I'm an old soul. I like old music and old movies and old, even old people. Bottom line is I have nothing in common with the people out there and they have nothing in common with me. Winona Ryder, Heathers. Ryder gives an iconic performance in this dark comedy. Dear Diary, I want to kill and you have to believe it's for more than just selfish reasons, more than just a spoke in my menstrual cycle. You have to believe me. Belle Powley, The Diary of a Teenage Girl. Powley is amazing in this difficult period piece. My name is Minnie Getz. I'm a 15-year-old living in San Francisco, California, 
recording this onto a cassette tape because my life has gotten really crazy of late and I need to tell someone about it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Leonardo DiCaprio – What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Long before memes were made about Leonardo DiCaprio's lack of an Oscar, he got his first Academy nomination for this drama. The actor isn't the main character in a story about a man in small-town Iowa trying to keep his family together. You're gonna tell me, and then I'm gonna take care of it for you, right? And why will I take care of it? Gilbert. Hmm? So you're Gilbert. Because I'm Gilbert. Because nobody hurts Arnie, right? But DiCaprio definitely left the biggest impression. As Arnie, he plays a boy who has difficulty overcoming his phobias and trauma within a tough family situation. This is the last time. Okay. Right? Buddy? It's the last time. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. We'll go back up there again. Let's go. The young DiCaprio makes sure to award the character the complexity and sensitivity the role deserved. Even actors twice DiCaprio's age would have difficulty with this kind of role. But his tremendous performance here proved he was destined to become a superstar. You scared me, buddy. You scared Gilbert. Don't scare Gilbert, OK? Don't scare Gilbert, OK? OK. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.